Hello year one, welcome to your geography lesson today on weather dangers, dangerous weather. So we've been looking so much at different types of weather. Today we're going to be looking at extreme types of weather. Okay, are you ready? So today we're going to be able to understand the dangers of weather, 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 weather and you're going to be able to to be successful at this, you're going to be able to explain three ways in which weather can be dangerous to us. And you're going to be able to understand that some of the things that extreme weather can do to our surroundings. So here's some key words that we might need today. Danger or dangerous, extreme, flooding, drought, hurricane, heat wave, protect, tsunami. That's an interesting word, that word tsunami, isn't it? So, the weather around the world changes every day, and we've talked about that a lot. We've talked about seasonal change, and we've talked about daily weather change. The weather in seasons, pretty much over a three-month period, stay the same. But daily weather can change each day. It doesn't always stay the same. However, it is in, in the same, uh, in keeping with the season of the year, okay, at that time of year. So, Although we know that weather changes every day, and we know it affects the things that we do. So for example, sometimes rain can be a slight drizzle or a quick shower or a heavy downpour, which stops you playing outside. And that's pretty rubbish, isn't it? Especially when we have wet play. Now these are normal changes, but sometimes weather can be dangerous, causing damage. Oh, I wonder if you can think of any types of weather that could be dangerous. Pause the video here a chat to the person in the room okay then welcome back so what do you think dangerous weather let's see if you thought of some of the dangerous weathers that I have on my presentation here so extreme types of weather and we're going to be thinking about um, the damage that weather can do to our surroundings so here we've got a drought now a drought means when there is no rain at all the rain has stopped and the sun comes out and it dries up all the water. There's some places, there's a place in Australia that hasn't had rain for four years. Four years! That's a really long time, isn't it? And in that time, you see, when there is no water, what do you think might happen to the plants and the animals? That's right, the plants start to die off. If we have a look at this picture here, the, the picture and the land is very barren. That means there's not a lot of things growing there. If you can see in the distance here, there's some trees, but there's not lots of vegetation. Vegetation is things like the plants and the shrubs. There's not a lot of that at all. There's not a lot of trees in the distance either. And I can't see any water. Perhaps once there was water here, but because there has been no rain, the water dries up and therefore it goes away. And then it doesn't come back until it starts to rain frequently. That means lots of times again. Then the opposite to drought, so where, where in the drought there is no rain, no water, the opposite weather extreme to that is flooding. Now flooding is when there's too much water too much rainfall but what happens here is the rain falls and it continually falls until the river so the river the rivers and the the lakes and uh, the streams start to rise and rise because the water is going into the river for the rain and what happens is the rivers they it says People say they burst its banks. That means the water comes up over the top of where the river normally is and it starts to move out into the land. And that's what causes flooding. And flooding can be quite dangerous. People can drown in floods. Sometimes, if you look here, can you see how high the water is? It's up past their front door. In fact, here, it's right up to their windows. Imagine your house being filled with all of that water. And it's not clean water like what you get in a swimming pool. It's dirty, muddy, horrible, stinky water because it's come from the river and it's moved across the land. And as the water is moving across the land, it's bringing debris. That means different um, pieces of rubbish along with it. 
So it's not very nice water. So that's the other extreme to drought. Then we've got a hurricane. Now a hurricane is a type of wind. It's not just like when it's a little bit windy. It's a really strong wind. And sometimes the wind can be really fast and it will move things. It will break things because the force of the wind. If you look at the palm trees in this picture, you can tell exactly which way the wind is blowing because it's pushing all the leaves of the trees that one way. A hurricane can rip through areas and destroy houses and buildings and cars. It can also destroy all of the vegetation. So the plants, the trees, the, um, and, and it can destroy homes for animals too. Now this is a tornado. Now a tornado is a circular wind that goes round like this and it comes down from thunder clouds. So it comes down and it whips around and as it moves along with the clouds, it takes things into the circle that's moving around like that. But in the middle of that circle, that circular motion, it's deadly quiet and silent. So often the tornado will move across and there's a point where you think it might have gone away. And that part's called the eye of the storm. But then it continues again. And then we have a tsunami. Now a tsunami is like a really huge wave. And we've been looking at lots of waves, haven't we? However, a tsunami is when um, there's been an earthquake underneath the ground in the sea and it sucks the sea back down and then pushes it out to cause this enormous wave. Now, we're going to watch a little video now all about severe weather. This lady is amazing and she gives you some really interesting facts about severe weather. So let's watch it now. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Sorry about that. Today we're going to talk about... Are you finished, Thunder? Thank you. Thunder is pretty excited because today's episode is all about it. Well, to be more specific, today's episode is all about severe weather. But before things get all snowy, windy, and rainy in here, let's bundle up and ask ourselves the big question. What exactly is severe weather, and how is it different from regular weather? We know that weather is a condition of the air or atmosphere on our planet. Severe weather is the same thing, only more extreme. Extreme! But what does that mean? How do you know when weather is severe or extreme, and when it isn't? Well, severe weather is any dangerous act of nature that puts people, animals, or buildings at risk. Some light rain probably wouldn't count as severe weather, but a thunderstorm with heavy rain and lightning would. Tornadoes, blizzards, hurricanes, floods, and droughts are other forms of severe weather that can be dangerous to humans. But the more you know about these weather events, the less scary they seem. Let's start with tornadoes. A tornado is a fast-spinning column of air that stretches all the way from a thunderstorm cloud down to the Earth's surface. With wind speeds of up to over 300 kilometers an hour, tornadoes have the power to pick up and destroy everything in their path. While not quite as windy as a tornado, blizzards are storms with blowing or falling snow, high winds of their own, and cold temperatures. Hurricanes, or typhoons, are storms with high winds and heavy rain that start over warm ocean waters and bring lots of water with them. Speaking of lots of water, let's talk flooding. Floods happen when too much rain forces streams, rivers, and lakes to overflow, sending lots and lots of water where it doesn't belong, like your backyard. A drought is sort of the opposite. Think a lot less water, or no water at all. Droughts happen when an area doesn't receive enough rainfall, drying up rivers and lakes, killing trees, and ruining crops. All of those forms of severe weather have a big impact on the biosphere and the geosphere. How so? Let's find out. I'll conjure up some different types of severe weather to see exactly how shakeups in the atmosphere can impact the biosphere and the geosphere. Hmm. 
Severe weather can be dangerous for people, obviously, but beyond affecting humans in the biosphere, severe weather can also affect plants and animals, too. Take a drought. After very long spells without enough rain, this nice mountain pond will become smaller, and maybe even dry up entirely. That means less habitat for the animals that live in the water, like ducks and beavers. But it also means less plant life around, because plants need water, too. And fewer plants mean less food for animals like deer and elk that feast on them. But what about the opposite problem? What about too much water in the form of heavy rain? Really strong thunderstorms can sometimes bring lightning and high winds that can damage trees, maybe breaking off some of their limbs, uprooting them, or even setting them on fire. This is bad news, not only for the tree, but also for everything that lives in it. And finally, even the ground, as solid as it might seem, can be reshaped by severe weather. Strong, recurring floodwaters act like powerful rivers and can actually wear down rocky formations like mountains over time. And sometimes big flows of rainwater can cause a slope or hillside to collapse in an event called a mudslide. The atmosphere interacts strongly with the other spheres of the environment, particularly when it's cooking up severe weather. It can even move things in the biosphere and reshape the geosphere. So now you know how to tell if weather is severe or not. Ask yourself, does it put life or property at risk? Does it have a major impact on the biosphere and the geosphere? If the answer is yes, you're not dealing with normal weather patterns. Severe weather might be less common, but it has a much bigger impact on the world around you. Anything to add there? I guess that means we're done. Okay then, so what we're going to be thinking about now then, oops, a little bit too far there, <laughs> is how we can look after ourselves in dangerous weather. So I want you to think about extreme weathers that we have looked at so far. What could you do to keep safe in that dangerous weather? How can you make sure that you are protected and you are not going to get into trouble? What could you do? How could you protect yourself from floods? How could you protect yourself from droughts? So what you to think about today, year one, and you're going to use this mind map here to jot down your ideas. Once you've done that, you have finished your geography for today. Now you take care and I will see you next week back in school. Take care. Bye.